Hey, guess what? I got something exciting to tell you. Follow me. Okay, so a lot of you know that for the last couple of years I've been working at an elementary school. And one of the things I've been trying to do almost that entire time is get a game design program going. Nothing big, just something small where I can have the kids take ideas from their heads and get them onto the screen, right? But the more I looked, the more I looked at all the tools, the more I couldn't find anything. The more that a program would seem to be for kids for be like, you know, eight, nine years old, then all of a sudden it jumped to something really complex that didn't make any sense and you couldn't make anything with it. There were a few tools out there, but nothing seemed right. You had things like Scratch, which everyone recommends to you, but that's, that's good for programming. It's not very good for game design, though. You can make the cat dance a little bit, but you can't design levels. You can't add some enemies to the levels and have the player fight them. It's pretty basic. Again, good for programming, not for anything else, really. You have some programs like GDevelop, which are really good, but had some limitations like being Windows only, and we operate only on Chromebooks at my school, so that was something I couldn't use. Um, finally, we settled on something called Bitsy, which is really cool, because even though the elementary school operates on a whitelist, which means that only websites are allowed, that are allowed get accessed, we could, I could hand out flash drives, and the kids could boot Bitsy off of a flash drive, and that was really great. I got to see them get creative and you know break the rules. They would combine. They would take the limits of eight by eight sprites and they'd make big you know 64 by 64 monsters by putting a bunch of different animated sprites together. It was crazy. And so what I realized is I had to take it. I'd take this idea and I had to go further with it. But I couldn't find any tools to do it. So recently I graduated college and something I decided I need to do is I need to make my own. And I'm going to take you along for the ride. Unfortunately, I chose to start this project during one of the year's many rendering season. What is rendering season, you might ask? Rendering season is that wonderful time of year where all the rendering creatures decide to lose their ugly gray coloring, bask in the lovely light of the simulated photons, and metamorphosize into beautiful final renders. They do this by choosing a host computer and using it as an incubator for weeks on end. This basically means it sounds like there's a 747 in my desk, and my room is the temperature of the sun. How do you feel about rendering season, Mr. Computer? Ooh, uh, I think he's a bit angry. Let's come back later. Thankfully, even with rendering going on, I'm still able to use my computer to get things started. Normally, most programming projects start out outlining the features and requirements with flowcharts and such. Instead, I decided to have the first step of the project be designing and setting up the basic user interface. I wanted to do this for two reasons. One, I wanted the UI to help decide the feature set. This program isn't meant to be the best engine of the world. No, this is just a tribute. I'm sorry I had to do that one. The main focus is to be easy for kids to learn. So if it felt like things were getting a little bit too complicated while designing the UI, then it meant it was time to scale back and do something a little bit more manageable. Another thing I wanted to avoid was getting stuck in planning hell. Oftentimes when you're working on a project by yourself, it's your call when and how to move to the next step. The planning step is often really comfortable to stay in because it's in your head. Everything works and it's the best it can possibly be. It's only when you start actually making the thing that you run into all the unexpected challenges, roadblocks, and the millions of other things that you couldn't have possibly imagined in your head. I personally find that when I'm staring at a blank canvas, it's all too easy to convince myself that just a little more planning and then I'll get started is the right answer. And that's a slippery slope. I'm starting with the basic UI first, not just to help me narrow the scope, but also so I won't have to look at a blank canvas staring me in the face, when it is, in fact, finally time to put fingers to the keyboard. This is the final design I ended up settling on. Three main tabs at the top to switch between the level editor, drawing editor, and the logic editor. The level editor will be a simple tile-based grid like most 2D level editors. Originally, I was going to add tile set support, but realized that this would add a ton of excess complexity to things. Tile sets make it easier when you're working on large, full games, but I think it would be simpler to just treat each tile as its own separate asset. I also decided to axe the object list, and instead swap it out with a collapsible menu for changing level settings like gravity and such. The sprite editor will be a 16x16 grid with a color selector and some basic brush options. I chose to limit it to 16x16 because I found that when teaching game design to children, uh, the kids tend to get bogged down if the art allows them to be too detailed and they still end up not really being happy with the sprites because they still don't all look that great. By setting a hard limit, they don't spend too much time drawing sprites and tend to be more happy with what they created because they know that everyone else is kind of facing the same limitation. There are still kids who will break the boundaries and make things that will surprise you, but it's usually clear that they're the exception rather than the rule. 
I also included a simple collapsible panel for adding animation frames. I'll probably start out with limiting it to like 5 to 10 frames just to see if kids reach it, and then remove the cap or make it bigger after testing if necessary. I'm not sure how to handle the differences between sprite and tile as far as editing goes. They're both essentially the same thing in this engine, but sprites get selected by an object and the other exists independently of the level and can have collision turned on and off. For now, I think I'm just going to add a checkbox to enable or disable collision that'll work with both sprites and tiles, and then I might just merge sprites and tiles into one thing later on. The logic editor is going to be the trickiest part to implement. I figure node-based is probably the easiest to grasp off the bat, so I went with the node editor. If done right, most basic things like moving the player, increasing score, etc. should be possible in under 5 nodes if the nodes are very high level, which in programming terms means that the nodes themselves do most of the legwork and not the user. So basically easy to use. I want to provide the option to edit the logic if somebody wants to teach or learn it, but since it's the most complex part of the entire program, I don't want to require it in order to make games. My plan to solve this is by offering logic presets, such as RPG character, race car, maze enemy, jump enemy, etc., so that somebody can just choose one and not have to mess with all the logic if they don't want to. I have a pretty good idea how to program something like this, but it'll still probably be the most difficult part of the project. Next, I got to work creating the project and programming the basic layout of the interface. Like I said before, I'm doing this to avoid the blank canvas paralysis. I'm using HTML5 and Vue for this project, which is component based. Since I know that this part of the interface won't change much, I'm safe in building it out and then filling in the sections with individual components later. A little while after I started, I had a working UI that allowed for the switching of different editors using the main tabs. Obviously, the colors are not final, and I'm only using them to help me see the different sections of the window. I also went ahead and initialized the git repository and made the first push, so just to get that out of the way as well. Once I got the basic skeleton of the program working, I started to make a detailed breakdown of how the program was going to operate. I broke the project down into modules, which roughly lined up with each of the major components, and went through each module and find the functionality as well as I could for now. I plan for this to be a living document, so I'll come back and update this as needed, and we'll fill out the modules in more detail as I get closer to working on them. Right now I'm focusing more on the localization and art editor modules, as I know those are going to be the ones I start with. While I was doing this, I realized it would probably be better to split the actual engine part into its own completely different repository and project, and import it as a sub-module. I still have some time before I need to make this decision, but I think it would keep the project a lot cleaner from both a code standpoint as well as a git standpoint. But man, I knew this project was going to be the biggest single project I've ever worked on to this point, but it wasn't until I was looking at this thing zoomed out that I really realized the scope of what I'm about to do. Strangely enough though, it just made me a lot more excited. The last thing I did in this stretch was to translate the flowchart into a Trello board to help me keep track of progress. Wow, a couple days, a haircut, and a lot of planning later when we've reached the end of this first video. Now, I plan on releasing one of these every two weeks to keep you all updated on the project. Um, now, I've never really been much of a vlogger, so this will be a learning experience for the both of us. Anyways, as always, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. If not, you know what to do. Uh, if you want to help support this channel, the links are down in the description below. And as always, I will see you next time.